If science had all the answers, the world would be a boring place because there'd be no unanswered questions. As human beings, we thrive on mystery, so we need questions to exist to keep us entertained. Fortunately for us, science doesn't have all the answers. They can't even answer some of the world's most ancient mysteries, as you're about to see in this video. Let's start off in Konkan, India, where archaeologists discovered an enormous collection of thousands of rock carvings in late 2018. They believe that the carvings might be the work of a previously unknown civilization that lived in the area 10,000 years ago. Our existing beliefs about history tell us that any culture that existed more than 10,000 years ago would have been little more than primitive hunter-gatherers. But could hunter-gatherers have really created all this? The rock carvings evaded the attention of experts for such a long time because they were hidden beneath the soil. But now the soil has been combed away and the complexity of the work has been revealed. Most of the carvings are petroglyphs of animals, but the mystery is that most of the animals are native to Africa rather than India. That's a clue that the people who made them must have migrated to India from the African continent and might have been the first human beings ever to settle in the area. It's even possible that the petroglyphs could be up to 12,000 years old, which would make them the oldest in the world. The Jerusalem Biblical Zoo is a good place to go looking for animals, but not animals of the kind you're about to see here. They're toads, and they were deliberately buried in what appears to be a purpose-built tomb around 4,000 years ago. Stranger than that is the fact that all nine of the toads were decapitated before they were buried and then laid to rest alongside vessels containing myrtle bushes and date palms. It's such an unusual discovery that its significance isn't known and might never be known. Even the myrtle bushes and date palms are a mystery because the place they were buried is not their natural habitat. Like the decapitated toads, they were brought here specifically to be buried the only possible explanation that archaeologists have for the 2017 discovery is that the toads were an offering for somebody who was buried in the tomb, but there were no human occupants inside the tomb when it was open. Were the frogs considered so special that they merited a tomb of their own? If so, how would it make sense to decapitate them before burying them? China is up next on our world tour of discoveries because China is where a monument described by archaeologists as an ancient sun altar was found in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region in July 2017. They believe the circle-shaped structure, which has a diameter of almost 500 feet, to be around 3,000 years old. It was most likely created and used by the nomadic tribes who roamed this area back then, the stone used in the three circled layers of the altar isn't local, and based on barely visible trenches in the ground, experts think the material might have been dragged here from miles away using a combination of men and horses. Its structure is similar to yurts in Mongolia, which are known to have been used by sun worshippers. However, nothing like it has ever been found in this part of China before. Historians say that the presence of the altar is evidence that the central plain culture had reached this area long before the Silk Road was established 2,200 years ago. The Silk Road is often credited with bringing culture to this part of the world, but it's now apparent that there was culture here already. It's said that the best way to get to know somebody is to walk in their shoes. So what can we learn from the footprints that were found close to the old Doinyo Lengai volcano in Tanzania in May 2019? There are 400 human footprints here in total, and they could be anything up to 19,000 years old. Based on analysis of the prints, they belong to 12 people who traveled through the area together. The group includes men, women, and children, and the prints are so detailed that it's possible for scientists to identify that one of the adults had a broken toe. The mountain is known by the local Maasai people as the Mountain of God. What's curious about the discovery is that whoever these people were, they were walking up the volcano in the immediate aftermath of a volcanic eruption. There was a layer of ash and dust at the site that was still soft enough to act like a printing mold 
thus preserving the footprints for all these years. Why would anyone choose to approach a volcano that was still smoldering? Might it have been due to scientific curiosity? There are many ancient mysteries to be found in Egypt, but perhaps none quite so bizarre as the unfinished obelisk of Aswan. This is the largest of all the known ancient Egyptian obelisks and would have been even bigger had its makers ever gotten around to the task of finishing what they started. The quarry that the obelisk rests in is thought to have been the first source of granite the ancient Egyptians ever discovered. And the obelisk itself is at least 4,000 years old. It's impossible to know why the monument was left in an unfinished state, but it might have something to do with the fact that the granite they were working with had begun to crack. Deciding they couldn't repair the damage, they left it, still connected to its parent rock. Several of the workers left maker's marks and small carvings on its surface before they abandoned it. Sadly, we'll never know where it would have been erected had it been finished, but it would have stood almost 150 feet tall and would likely have been considered one of the wonders of the ancient world. The game of Sudoku is a popular way of killing time and keeping the brain active, and that's been the case for centuries. Thanks to a discovery in India in April 2018, we now know that people have enjoyed the hobby for so long, they even indulged in it on the walls of temples. Over 300 years since the hand-drawn magic square game was chalked into the side of the temple, it's been covered by several layers of limestone. Because of this, the old game was only found while the temple, which is in Palani, was undergoing repair work. The temple itself dates back to the 13th century, but the Sudoku-like game was only etched onto it somewhere around the year 1700. The numbers on the square are written in the Tamil language and add up to 15 in every direction. The number has religious significance. Every god in the Hindu religion has a number. And the number 15 belongs to Murugan, the god of war. It might not be precisely the same as the version of Sudoku we enjoy today, but it works with the same principles of logic. The United States of America may not have a Stonehenge, but it does have an outstanding triple wood hinge known as the Moorhead Circle. It was created 2,000 years ago in the middle of the Fort Ancient Earthworks in Ohio. Very little of the site is visible to the naked eye today, but what's left of it was discovered in 2005 by the archaeologist Jared Burks. According to his measurements, the circle is around 200 feet in diameter and would have once contained 200 wooden posts marking out its outermost circle. We don't know what the site was used for, but we know that it remained in use for a long time. Carbon dating tests carried out on the remnants of one of the posts suggest it was erected in the year 40 BCE, but burned timber fragments found in a pit in the middle of the circle can be dated to the second century. That places the creation and use of the Moorhead Circle within the time of the Hopewell culture. So it seems they were here before the Fort Ancient culture arrived in the area. Millions of people enjoy crossword puzzles, but comparatively, few of these people are aware that the history of creating crossword puzzles can be traced back thousands of years. Here's one from the ancient city of Smyrna. You'll find the ruins of the settlement within the boundaries of the modern Aegean city of Izmir in Turkey, where it appears on the wall of a 2,500-year-old basilica. The crossword appears to have been written about 500 years after the basilica was built. It contains Greek words that can be read left to right and top to bottom. It would technically be more correct to call it an acrostic than a crossword, but it's effectively the same thing. Making sense of the crossword is difficult because it contains the names of people as well as seemingly random Greek words. But there are some who believe it contains encoded information used by early Christians to communicate with each other in secret. There would have been stalls obscuring the wall here 2,000 years ago, so the words would have been hidden. On the other hand, it's just as possible that the crossword was created for the same reason we create crosswords today as a form of entertainment. There's an ancient mummy in China that has absolutely no business being in China. He's known to us as Churchin Man, 
and his remains were found in the Taklamakan Desert. The desert's name, when translated into English, means you enter, but you never leave. That seems to have been true of Church and Man. There would be no mystery here if this man were an ancient Chinese person who'd perished in the desert because of exposure, but he isn't. He looks very much like a Bronze Age European, and that's exactly what he is. His DNA confirms that he's of Celtic origin. He was found with three women and a baby, and all of those bodies are of Celtic origin too. The desert is thousands of miles east of the easternmost known ancient Celtic settlement, so we have no idea how he and the women and child who presumably made up his family got here. Obviously, they must have traveled from Europe, but did they come alone? If they didn't, were there more Celtic people in China during the Bronze Age? How could that be possible when no other trace of them has ever been found? These days, displaying your middle finger to someone is considered offensive. But that's not why Galileo's middle finger is on display at the Galileo Museum in Florence, Italy. Under normal circumstances, we'd refer to this artifact as reliquary. But such objects usually contain body parts taken from a saint. It's perhaps ironic that the owner of the bony finger in this egg-shaped object belongs to a man who many of his peers thought of as a heretic. The circumstances of Galileo's finger ending up like this are a little shady. It's said that a man named Anton Francesco Gori snapped it off his hand in 1737. By that time, Galileo had been dead for almost a century. Other pieces of Galileo have subsequently turned up with private sellers and later found their way to the museum, including his thumb, index finger, and one of his teeth. There are two ways of interpreting Galileo's finger in this pose. You could say it's pointing to the heavens, which he spent his whole life watching, or perhaps he really is telling his critics in the church what he thinks of them after all. There are three names for our next artifact. It's most commonly known as the Merneptah Steel, but it's also known as the Israel Steel and the Victory Steel of Merneptah. The Merneptah part of the name comes from the fact that it bears an inscription recording a military victory over the Libyans by the armies of the Egyptian pharaoh Merneptah, who ruled Egypt 3,200 years ago. It's the connection to Israel that might be more historically significant, though. Some scholars have interpreted a line of hieroglyphs in the 27th line of the inscription as the word Israel. If they're right, this is the oldest written reference to the name in history. It would also be the only written reference to Israel to come from ancient Egypt. There's some controversy about the finding, though, because it's possible to interpret the symbols in different ways. This is a debate that's been ongoing since the day the steel was discovered by Flinders Petrie in 1896, and it's not likely to end anytime soon. This is the problem with translating ancient languages. Even when you can translate the words, you can't always understand their meaning. Why is there a series of tunnels carved into the hillsides of Kyushu and Tamana, Japan? Well, if you can come up with an answer to that question, you'll win a lot of new friends in the Japanese archaeology community. They've been trying to uncover the secrets of the tunnels for decades, and they've had no success so far. The tunnels show clear signs of being made by humans but are so small in some places that only a child could fit through their narrowest points. Confusingly, they then expand to heights up to 14 feet in other places. The tunnels run for 1,500 feet and have the appearance of being ancient, but nobody knows when they were built or why. They've been named the Tonkararan, but nobody remembers where the name comes from either. It's close to the Korean for a stone thrown into a tunnel, but it's not a perfect match. To add to the mystery, elements of the stonework are similar to the style seen on the Great Pyramids of Egypt, but entirely dissimilar to any other known ancient Japanese construction. To top it all off, there's a shrine at the end of the tunnel, but we don't know who it's dedicated to. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.